Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to another video. We are working on this beautiful dresser. It is a tiger oak, so it's got beautiful wood grains. I definitely will be bringing some of that out with a two-toned. Uh, if you don't know this already, I love two-tone furniture. It also sells really well for me, so I really enjoy doing it. It's a little bit more work, but I think it definitely pays off. The only issue um, is this mirror has a bunch of little spots since it is an antique mirror. It uh, definitely has some wear, but I think it shows some character and uh, just uh, shows how old the piece really is. So first off, as always, we are vacuuming everything out, making sure all that dust and debris does not get on my cloth when I go to clean it. Just makes it a little bit easier. Now this hardware is super strange. It was so annoying to take off. Uh, my plan was to actually keep this hardware and I changed my mind pretty much last minute because of this. I don't know what they did. It's like a washer and then the backing is also a washer and that's only on one piece. So I changed my mind last minute and we're doing new hardware. I'm using some simple green all-purpose cleaner to clean the inside and the outside as well as the drawers to make sure that any dust and debris is gone. It's so important to clean your pieces before sanding so that way any dirt or oils don't get pushed further into the wood causing your paint to not adhere properly. This was the worst drawer out of all of them. It looks like they tried to glue it back together and glue got everywhere. And then I moved on to the mirror. I really didn't even want to bother with this mirror, but I kind of convinced myself I might as well just do it. And it doesn't look like anyone has ever taken this backing off because there is so much gross dust everywhere. I tried not to break those little wood pieces, but it was so hard. Like I said, I don't think it was ever removed. So it was just so difficult to take those nails out. And then again, cleaning with the simple green on this little decal here. It was so difficult to get into all the little grooves, but I managed to, to do as best as I could um, with what I had. And I scrubbed for quite a while. This clip is shortened, uh, but I definitely scrubbed it really well. Once everything was dry, I took my carbide scraper to scrape off the finish. I didn't realize how thick this finish really was because when I came in with an 80 grit sandpaper, it wasn't even budging it. So I had to come back and scrape it again and just making sure that I'm putting more pressure but not enough to gouge anything. You wanna be really careful with these scrapers. You can easily gouge the wood. So just uh, take your time and make sure that you're not applying too much pressure but enough to get rid of all the finish that you can. In this clip here, you can see where I did scrape more compared to the last clip. So it's definitely a lot easier to remove this finish. I'm just using a 120 to get rid of the rest of the finish and then moved on to a 220 to smooth everything out. And it's always a good idea to hand sand around the edges so that way you don't end up flattening them by accident with the orbital sander. With the sides of this dresser, I just use my orbital sander for any areas that I can get. And then I use this Dremel tool. It's so great for getting into the corners as you can see. And I was able to remove most of the finish. It was still really hard to get into the edges, but I'm happy with how it turned out. And I think the stain kind of covered any areas that I wasn't able to get. Since one of the drawers was not very pretty on the inside, I sanded all the drawers on the inside and the outside. There was only a few parts on this dresser that required some filling. So I'm just using quick wood to mold and shape that little corner and I had a little extra to do all the other little parts. And while that was drying, I moved on to scuff sanding the entire piece using a 220 grit. And hopefully by the time I was done uh, with my scuff sanding, the quick wood would be dried because it does dry in under 15 minutes. It's really great when you want something to dry really quick. Scuff sanding is such an important step to do when you're painting. It gives your paint something to adhere to, so it's super important to always scuff sand. I know some people don't like to scuff sand, but you know what, if it makes your paint last longer, then it's just one extra step that you should always do to ensure your piece lasts for years to come.
I decided I wasn't happy with the side of this dresser, so I just used some all-purpose DAP wood filler to fill it in and then sanded it smooth with a 220 grit. After all that dust kicks up from sanding, you want to make sure that you wipe it away with a damp cloth. You can use a tack cloth, but I find a damp microfiber cloth works just fine. Once everything has been wiped down and set to dry, I'm just using some wood conditioner on all the spots that I want to stain. I always like to use wood conditioner just to ensure my stain takes evenly. And I do use gel stain most of the time. Uh, so it does hide things a little bit better than the liquid stains, but I still like to use the wood conditioner as an extra insurance that my stain takes evenly. I usually always paint before I stain, but I wanted to try something new, and so I decided to stain it first, and then you'll see what happens later on in the video, um, but typically I always want to stain stain after I paint so that way if there's any bleed through I can always sand it away but because there's these edges I just thought it was going to be way too difficult to sand away anything without messing up my paint finish. I've seen some people add so much wood stain to their pieces, like a huge thick layer, and I just find that so unnecessary and such a waste. So I always just use a thin layer, and then any excess, I do wipe it off with a rag. And making sure you're going with the wood grain, in case there is any streaking, it's camouflaged with the wood grain. So this is what I wanted to try out using this clear primer, so that way it kind of seals the tape in and hopefully prevents any bleed through. While I was letting the clear primer dry, I'm just using some Bin Shellac Base Primer for the decal, and this unfortunately did not go as planned. I think I didn't shake the can good enough. I didn't have any issues on the side of the dresser once the clear primer dried, because I think I was shaking it more as I was using it. So everything got all mixed together and was properly coming out and applying to the piece. I really wanted to avoid any bleed through onto my stained piece. So that's why I chose to do the can instead of the roller. The roller, it's easier to push paint underneath of the tape. So I thought the can would be a better option. I did one full coat of primer over this entire piece since I am painting it black. There's just less of a chance of seeing any bleed through, but it actually worked really well. I didn't have any bleed through at all with just one coat. And I'm super surprised because when I was cleaning this piece, even after it was cleaned, my rag was just getting dirtier and dirtier with the bleed through. After I was done priming, that's when I seen all the crackling happening where I had spray painted the primer. So I had to sand it and scrape away as much as I could. It wasn't even drying properly, it was very tacky. So I had to get rid of as much as I could, sand it, wipe it down, and reprime it with my trusty roller. Sometimes you do things to save time and it works out. Other times it doesn't work out and you just have to roll with the punches when you're a furniture flipper and fix your mistakes. It actually wasn't even that difficult to use my roller to get into all the little spots. I was just worried that I would end up getting a lot of buildup, so that's why I tried the spray primer. After the primer's dried, I'm using a sanding sponge to get rid of any texture that was left over with the roller, and then wiping away any of the dust with a damp rag. Now that I'm finally ready to paint, we are using Shadow by House & Canvas. I had to come back about four different times to get all of the little white spots out of this decal. It was really annoying, but I finally managed to get full coverage. You always want to make sure you're doing light coats on all of your pieces with the primer, the paint, and the top coat. This reduces any streaking or buildup that you can get if you're adding too much paint at one time. At this point, I'm already thinking to myself, ugh, there's bleed through, I know there's bleed through, 
but I've already committed to doing this way and I will follow through and fix any issues that might come up with the bleed through. I ended up doing about two and a half coat sanding with a fine grit sanding pad in between coats to ensure I get the smoothest finish possible. So I think that the bleed through is not as bad as it could have been if I didn't spray the clear primer. So I just cleaned it up a little bit with a razor blade and then I am applying a second coat of stain. I didn't film it, but it just made it a little bit darker and also kind of hid any of the spots in the corners that uh, it bled through a little bit on. Now that everything is fully painted and cleaned up on the edges, I am top coating it and I just mixed a little bit of my paint with the top coat for the black pieces to avoid any streaking that's common with this top coat. And I did use a edging brush to get into all the cracks, which was again annoying because of the decal, but I think I did a pretty good job. I definitely don't think it's perfect but I'm really happy with how it turned out. And for the areas that I stained, I just used Varathane Diamond Wood Finish in clear, so no paint mixed in with that. Okay, we are in the home stretch, guys, so I am just applying some contact paper because that one drawer was pretty ugly, and I did get this on Amazon, so I'll link it in the description if you're interested. I think it fit in really well with the style of this piece. Last but not least, I'm putting some gold gilding wax on this hardware that goes on the mirror, and I got this from Amazon as well. Are you ready to see the finished dresser? Here's another look at the before, and here's the after.